I'm going to be talking all about cake and what I learned from cutting one. Now, you might be asking yourself, what does cake have to do with what I know, how I know it, or really anything academic at all? Well, I'm going to have to ask you to hold on to your curiosity for a bit, because in order to explain the cake, I have to start at the beginning with a book from my dad. See, when I was in elementary school, my dad gave me a book called The Ten Things All Future Mathematicians and Scientists Must Know, but are rarely taught. And the first of these ten things is the idea that math will always tell you the truth. Now, I was young, naive, and newly in awe of my new favorite subject, math, so I had no problem wholeheartedly agreeing with this statement. And I think at some point in our lives, everyone is bound to agree with it. All you have to do is ask the student who's tried to cram in four hours of homework in the two hours left before the caffeine wears off, or the one who tries to finish one last 45-minute episode of their favorite television show in the half hour before they agreed to meet their parents for lunch. So while I think we can all accept that math will always tell us the truth is constant and is unchanging, the problem arises when we try to apply mathematical solutions to real-life problems. This is where the cake comes in. See, a few years ago, I was reading a book of mathematical essays, the first of which was concerned with the problem of how to cut a cake. Now, it's a question of equal division. The basic setup of the cake problem is the idea that multiple people wish to divide a cake or equally desirable object so that each one is convinced that they've received a fair portion. Now, mathematicians have come up with varying solutions to this problem and all of its variants. The simplest form of this problem is one that involves one cake and two people. And the solution to it has actually been known for thousands of years. It's known today as the I cut, you choose method. It's fairly self-explanatory. One person cuts the cake and the other person gets to choose the first piece. Now, it's mathematically and logically, it makes sense as to why this would result in fair division. Whoever cuts the cake is sure to cut it in a way that they think is equal, and whoever picks the first piece is not going to say that they didn't get a fair share. So, being the nerd that I am, I decided to try out this method with my little brother over a piece of leftover cake. Because I was older, I had to handle the knife, and so I cut, and I let him choose the first piece. However, after we applied the mathematical method, neither of us were convinced that we'd received a fair portion. Why? Well, one of the underlying assumptions of the I cut, you choose method is that whoever is cutting the cake will cut exactly where they intend to. Of course, this doesn't always happen in real life. I got pretty close, but it wasn't exactly where I thought a fair division would be. And so, no matter which piece I ended up with, I was probably going to say it wasn't fair. The mathematical solution was correct, but my application of it wasn't. Math was telling me the truth, but I failed to see that that truth wasn't quite applicable to my actual real-life situation. This kind of problem of translating knowledge into effective application shows up in something I think every student has experienced, vocabulary quizzes. These regular vocabulary quizzes have good intentions behind them. They give students a greater vocabulary of words to use for speaking, reading, and writing in high school, college, and beyond. However, due to the way that some students, including myself, study or cram for these vocabulary quizzes, we end up with only facts about the words and not how to actually use them in context. We could tell you definitions, how to spell a word, or what part of speech it is, but when asked to use words like mellifluous or superlative in context, we might misuse them slightly. This isn't a fault of the way that the system is set up or the content of the vocabulary quizzes, but rather in the way we're approaching our education. See, we're treating these vocabulary quizzes as ways to receive knowledge and not, how, not teaching us how to apply them. But in fact, that's not the case. The question is though, how do we tell students how to effectively translate knowledge into application? Well, in order to answer that question, I have to go back to a story from my dad. When he was an undergrad in college studying engineering, he told me that one of the hardest classes he had to take was one where the professor required all of his students to derive all of the equations they used by hand. 
Naturally, this was a difficult and arduous process, and the students were even more troubled by the fact that that course had a huge textbook filled with equations. At the time, the students didn't like that aspect of the class, but looking back, my dad told me that it was one of the most valuable experiences of his undergraduate career. Why? Because he had to derive all the equations by hand, he had a better understanding of what they meant, what they did, what they were based on, and thus he had a greater understanding of their limitations. This allowed him to successfully translate that knowledge of that many equations into effective application in his coursework and in his career. This is the real goal of education. It's not just to dole out parcels of knowledge, but it's to give students lessons for life. Education gives students the tools and the desire to become lifelong seekers of knowledge and even create some of their own. Thank you.